I would start very briefly to give you a rough idea about the conceptual framework, how I understand the institutes. Um, then I will briefly talk about the general situation of Confucius Institutes in Africa with a focus on South Africa and then I will give you some insights on a more, I would say, conceptual aspect and some more practical issues. And I'm trying to make the argument and trying to convince you in the audience that also Confucius Institutes in Africa, South Africa, are more or less roughly the same entity as they are elsewhere in the world. There are some very significant um, differences between the CI situation in Africa and other parts of the world. So, very briefly, oh no, just the brief framework. Um, as other people here in the room, I understand cultural diplomacy as a part of public diplomacy. So, public diplomacy, the bigger concept, and is a means to wield soft power. We've heard a lot about this, so I won't talk about too much on the resources of soft power, but I think what is important, especially in the case of China and Africa, is that foreign aid can also be considered as a source of soft power. And this is very much um, of importance, as I said, with the case of Confucius Institutes in Africa, because I will come back later on to this. Um, We had the numbers before, 440 Confucius Institutes around the world, some 640 Confucius classrooms around the world. These are really big numbers. I mean, we might discuss about the numbering issue because I think not of all, all of these 440 Confucius Institutes are actually working and running, but that's a different um, story. But nevertheless, it's a huge number. And I think the US alone has over 100, something like this. So it's really a big number. So compared, um, looking at the whole African continent, and I'm just very simplifying Africa as a continent, and I'm very well aware there are different countries, but just to give you a rough idea, there are 37 Confucius Institutes currently on the whole continent. These were the latest numbers I was um, getting from the official statistics, and there are some 10 Confucius classrooms. I'm not sure whether these numbers are correct, but that's at least official um, data. And so having the 100 institutes in the US and having 37 Confucius Institutes on the whole continent, that makes the difference quite, um, quite <clears throat> telling. It's even more telling when you look at the fact that South Africa, the country with the most Confucius Institutes, has four. So it's really, really a difference. Now you might question and ask, why is this? I'm not too sure, but I think one of the reasons for this is very much the situation in Africa that there's nothing like a tradition or also nothing like a infrastructure to engage with China on a university level. So on the whole continent, as far as I know, until today there is one program doing Mandarin Chinese language at the university level and there's only one institute, research institute, dedicated to the research of contemporary China nowadays. And when you have this situation, and then you're thinking about Confucius Institutes and what they are doing, then you might ask a question, and you might argue and say, it's possible that the Confucius Institutes in Africa, on the African continent, might have a much more prominent role, and they could have a much more influential role than they have in other parts of the world. And in order to answer this question, or at least to get a little closer to this um, question, oh no, First of all, oh yeah, exactly, first of all, sorry. First of all, I um, wanted to mention another important difference which somehow relates to this importance or this assumed or intended importance by the Confucius Institutes, especially from the Chinese side, because as I said before, with regards to China, uh, with regards to Africa, Confucius Institutes are officially and explicitly linked to, China, uh, to China's foreign aid programs that's going on in Africa. We have this so-called FOCAC, the Forum on China-Africa Corporation, and this is a multinational corporation where China is engaging with almost every African country. And within these FOCAC documents, it's very clearly and explicitly stated and noted that Confucius Institutes are one example and one tool of cooperation in the field of education. So I would say this is a very interesting and 
also, I would say, important aspect because as far as I know, there might be people in the audience have more knowledge about this, but I think this is one of the very few instances where Confucius Institutes are explicitly and very directly linked to broader issues of China's foreign policy and foreign policy agenda. Because the situation is when you talk to people at Confucius Institutes, more often than not, they are trying to stay away from all the political things and saying, oh, we don't do anything with politics, we are doing culture. But when you look at the documents, especially in the China-African context, you can make the connection to the broader foreign policy issues. And I think this is one of the few instances where this actually really, where you can find it on paper. And because it is in this regard mentioned, the Confucius Institutes, you can also understand them in this whole win-win discourse, which the Chinese government is the Chinese government is trying to establish win-win situations with almost any country in the world, but they are especially trying to have these win-win situations with Africa. It's this kind of discourse, it's this thou thou it's we against the West, and within this context, the Confucius Institutes sit. And now I'm trying to give you some insights. The question actually is, what's happening at Confucius Institutes? And when you look at what they are doing, I was reading the internal documents, the official documents, going through the programs, talking to people there, especially in South Africa. At first of all, it looks like they are doing more or less the same as they do anywhere else here in the US or in Europe. So they are doing something language related, something cultural related. The biggest difference, as far as I know, with regards to language is the very fact that institutes in Africa, in South Africa, are doing credit-bearing language courses. This is, as far as I know, an important difference to other institutes in the world, especially in Europe, for example. I think it's the same here in the US. I'm not too sure, but in Europe, it's very much a complementary offering. But you don't do a proper credit course at the, uh, at the Confucius Institute in Europe, for example. So this is the biggest difference um, with regards to language. Then I skipped the uh, local teaching materials because this is nothing really uh, special uh, related to Africa. Another uh, issue that it's interesting looking at the CIs in Africa is that there are attempts or plans or ideas coming from Beijing, from the Hanban, um, that Confucius Institute should engage more in vocational training. When I was um, talking to the people at South African Confucius Institutes, they, do, they don't do it. But they told me there might be some institutes, for example, in Kenya, where they are more engaging with agriculture, for example. I'm not too sure yet whether this is really the case, but it is the idea that Confucius Institutes should do more with regards to vocational training. Um, when it comes to the cultural activities, I think there are no real differences between the Confucius Institutes here in Europe and in Africa, for example. They are doing, as we've heard before, they are celebrating Chinese holidays, festivals, introducing certain aspects, I would say, normally certain aspects of the Chinese culture. The interesting question, of course, is what we call the sensitive issues. I've worked as a journalist before, so I'm trying to find where all the negative aspects. And um, summarizing this huge debate that's going on also here, I think, in the US, but also in Europe, I would say, Confucius Institutes, they don't do propaganda depending on how you define propaganda and how you understand it. I'm coming from Germany, I'm even East German, and we just in the clip you saw what it means when you speak German. But um, I would say if you have the negative understanding of propaganda, that's not really what the Confucius Institute do. On the other hand, however, you also have to admit that at least I would say most of the institutes only present a rather selective picture of China. So when it comes to all these sensitive issues, the TTT, Taiwan, Tibet, Tiananmen topics, that's normally not talked about. So it's a rather, I would say, selective presentation of certain images of China. And this leads to the question whether Confucius Institutes might be more influential Um, might be more influential in Africa than in other parts of the world. And here I would say, theoretically speaking, they might have the potential to be more influential 
because, as I said before, there is the surrounding is completely, the environment is completely different than compared to Europe, for example. The problem, however, is that they have a lot of practical issues, a lot of practical problems. One of the biggest problems the institutes have is a human resources problem. They just don't have enough teachers. No one wants to go to Africa to teach there. Whether this is true or not, it's very much an image perception issue. People don't want to go there because they think hard living conditions. So this is one of the big problems the institutes have, not only in Africa, but Africa is a very specific case in this regard. Another practical problem is teaching materials. The teaching materials don't really fit the local needs. Another issue is infrastructural aspects. These institutes somehow are housed in very shabby, old, rundown houses. And these are some of the very practical pro problems. And therefore, I would say the CIs have a certain potential to be much more influential in Africa. Of course, you could ask a question, what does it mean? Is it for good or for worse or for good or for bad? But right now, I would say there are just too many problems. The institutes are just on a much more low-key level, and it doesn't really put them in a position to have a huge influence. Um, yeah, I skipped the image because it's also nothing really different between the images presented in uh, Africa and other parts of the world. Overall, I would say on the surface, very much on the surface, one might understand the Confucius Institutes in Africa in this win-win discourse. But of course, the question is who is winning what, who is winning more, and also the question is are there any losers maybe, and this might be something we could talk about later on.